Welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to do uh, just a special little reading. Um, I'm doing it, you know, I was going to do it for Virgo. I want to say happy birthday to the Virgos out there. I'm also Virgo's son. Um, many of you know my birthday is uh, September 13th. It's like, oh my God, I forgot for a second. Um, my boyfriend's is August 23rd, so we already celebrated his birthday. Um so I was just going to do like a birthday read and then I realized we have the new moon in Virgo. So I want to, you know, take really take that in consideration. And um, before I go to the cards, I want to just give you a couple clues about what that really means. So the two signs that it's really going to affect, and it doesn't mean in a negative way, but are Virgo and Pisces and they are opposites. Um, I feel like this is going to be a time when you're you're really going to be motivated to take stock of like where you are in your life and where you really want to be. Uh, listen, Virgo is always thinking about that. Um, you may be like really laser focused on your job and um, and asking yourself, are you okay? At, you know where you're at or would you be happier making a move um you know i've done a lot of personal readings lately and i know that's come across the table quite often you know this year what the new moon in virgo did i even say that i'm doing a new moon which started september 2nd by the way um it's it's to help reset really the direction you're going to help you really ensure that you're on a path that truly feels right to you. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I feel like it's something we should do often. Um, the moon, the new moon, it's, it's really not about planting seeds at this point. It's about the harvest of the seeds that have already been planted. And, um, you know, what you're going to do with them, which direction are you going to take them? Um, one of the questions I feel that we're going to be asking this month during the new moon is, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? Um, this could also be a time when you are really thinking about your health. So I decided to bring Archangel Raphael into the mix and um, that's a good thing. You know, you may be asking yourself, am I exercising enough? What's my diet look like? Um, could I make improvements there? And if so, I feel like this is a good time to really do that. Um, you know, again, this is really about, you, you know, you're always planting seeds and we always want to be planting seeds. But again, this is about those seeds that you probably have planted, like, let's say, back in Aries energy. And now it's about the harvest. You know, if you're not seeing a harvest, you may not have planted any seeds. And that's why I talk about in my reading all the time. Plant those seeds of intention. You never know when something's going to show up for you. So anyways... This is going to be the new moon in Virgo, um, but it's also a Virgo reading, like a birthday reading, but it's going to be for all signs, you know, uh, because the new moon is for everyone. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into the cards now. So again, I'm going to use Archangel Raphael, really relating to our health. Of course, we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. I am going to use the Tredivia Tarot to do the clarifying today, um, or like I like to say, to go deeper. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of comments like, you talk too much, your videos are too long, and I know many of you are just like, Sandy, just ignore that, and I'm learning to do that. Hmm, Three of Swords, didn't want to come up with the rest. Interesting. Some of you could be going through some type of... Um, like a difficult situation, you know, some type of heartache, heartbreak, but I'm hoping this is that this may signify the end of it. And then for your main spread, I'm going to look at that. Okay. That didn't look at that. Hmm. 
Okay, I just want to check, make sure my, I always make sure my cards are, well, in the upright. And it's interesting because the hangman didn't want to come up and he is, he is not in the upright. He's reversed, but this is in the awakened state. So interesting that, and I swear, I check my deck. So don't know how, when it happened. But the hangman is in the awakened state. I'll take it. I'm happy. That makes me feel good. You know, that is, um, I feel like spiritual awareness. I also feel like when the hangman's in the awakened state, it's movement time. And it makes sense. So, you know, thank you, spirit guides. However you did that, I accept that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and begin. And let's start with let's start with Archangel Raphael. And I will read him from the book at the end of the reading. And of course, everything is always pre-shuffled, but I do like to give it a shuffle with you here. All right. We have good night's sleep. Good night's sleep. That's interesting because I have to say, as a Virgo, um, I hadn't been sleeping very well. The last couple nights I have, uh, I even took two days off just because I felt exhausted. Um, didn't know why. Just felt exhausted. And I usually don't. It's very, very seldom that I take like two days off in a row. I might take a day off. But um, I just felt like my body needed it. So let's see. Good night's sleep. Dear Archangel Raphael, thank you for helping me relax and sleep deeply. For I know that you are guiding, healing, and protecting me while I rest. Beautiful. Thank you, Archangel Raphael. All right. Let's put this over here. And... Let's go to Mother Mary now. Her beautiful words of wisdom. By the way, I don't know how many of you saw the video I put out. Um, it was a promotional video where um, I'm working with a company who sent me healing beads and put them on so just wanted to let you know that okay mother mary mother mary mother mary all right be strong. That might be why we saw the three swords. Be strong. I pull myself up and do what needs to be done. That's definitely a Virgo trait. Um, you know, not that others don't have that same trait, but that is definitely a Virgo trait. It's hard. It's hard to knock a Virgo down for long. And then children. Interesting. Children, you know, I also want to say with this new moon, you may feel guided to really reach out and help others, you know, um, or others may come to you and like seek your advice. Uh, you may feel like volunteering. You know, I feel like this is part of the new moon's energy. And I'm just I'm picking this up intuitively. Um, and it, it, children is making me think of that, like working with children. All right. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive changes for them and me. Children, be strong. Good night's sleep. Let's go ahead and bring the lid down. Let's get into the main spread. And again, we'll read, we'll read from the book at the end of the reading. So 
Look at that. It's like that. Uh, look at that. It's like the hangman wants to be seen in the awakened state. I I'm not even going to change it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. But I'm going to give it another shuffle. And I know when I shuffle like this, you know, sometimes the card stays on the bottom. Um, but still, that it didn't want to be picked up with the rest. I feel like that's a sign, guys. I feel like that's a sign. All right, but we are going to shuffle. So, again, my initial intention to do this reading was for Virgo. Um, like a happy birthday reading. But then my mind was turned towards the new moon and all that it represents. And that's why I feel like it really can be for anyone. All right. Well, hello, magician. And then the tower. Interesting. You know, the tower talks about potential disruption in one in one's life but i often read the tower as something that's already happened you know it's interesting in this image i always feel like someone's fallen from grace but the magician's energy right before that you know well if it was in reverse i would say this could be a trickster you know what i mean like someone that i can't trust but it's not in reverse um and what i always notice is the infinity number above the magician's head as above so below no beginning no end and the power of that and what i what i really feel with that is the remembrance that we are the spiritual being having human experiences and we when we look at it from a spiritual lens there's really nothing we cannot get through trust me i know that and that three swords we saw earlier that may be again what the tower is, but this is really the man, you know, energy of being able to manifest. You know, this is the fool's first mentor along a new journey. And the magician's job is to teach the fool that you really possess everything you need to be successful. You know, this could this could certainly signify that some type of tower happened, some type of change happened, and now what do I do? Well, I feel like this is strength that says you can do really whatever it is you want to do. You know, as long as you're willing to put the energy behind it. Okay. Let's keep going. Look at that. Page of Pentacles didn't want to come up this time. So I could certainly talk about for some that you've been through like this learning experience. You've been learning different things in life. Some of you, you've been learning how to overcome these towers. You're taking the power away from them. You know, sometimes things and people are eclipsed out of our life. And um, it's usually because our vibration is lifting and theirs is not. You know, think of the law of attraction. You know, wherever I am at in my life, wherever my vibration is at, what I'm sending out to the universe, the universe must meet. The universe does the universe doesn't decipher. You know, did she really mean to send that out? Well, that's where the vibration is at. You know, it reminds me of one of Mother Mary's cards where I, the saying is, I expect good things to happen, and they do. I expect good things to happen, and they do. But I, I feel like, you know, with every positive, there's, there's, there's the opposite, right? And that can mean, you know, if I expect bad things to happen, well, then they do. So think about what you're thinking about. No pressure. <laughs> and I don't mean like, you know, because I feel like a positive intention, I feel like it just kind of flows through the universe. I feel like a negative intention, it's, you know, it's like a little bit more choppy. So even though the universe doesn't really decipher, did they mean to send that energy out? 
Um, at the same time, I don't want you to freak out and think, oh my God, I've been in this negative headspace. But be aware of that. You know, be aware of that. We have the Queen of Wands. Um, can be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We just left Leo's energy. You know, to me, the Queen of Wands, if we just forget about the sign, I feel like this is someone who's very intuitive. This is someone who, and by the way, she, her, her focus is on the future, not the not this tower. Um, this is someone who moves according to her passions, her desires, not really fear. Well, Three of Swords made its way out. Different deck, but it did come out. Uh, Three of Swords is mirroring the Magician. Interesting. You know, if you look at this image, it's like this person can see these swords coming. It's like I can see them. I'm aware of them. Why am I just laying there? Why am I just accepting them? This can certainly talk about a repeat pattern, you know. Maybe I've given someone three chances. Something three chances. And I don't want to repeat it anymore. I feel like this Queen of Wands is kind of done with that energy. Hmm. Ten of Swords. So there is your repeat pattern. Ten of Swords to me is like dagger after dagger in your back. And again, it's interesting, but this person looking right up at those daggers, a lot of times you'll see him face down, but he's not face down. Like, he sees these daggers coming. It's hard to make change. Especially if it's something that we really wanted to work out. But sometimes things just aren't meant to work out. You know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes the lessons in life are, you know... Asking yourself, and this is the perfect energy in this new moon. Am I okay with this? You know, have I been in this repeat, you know, pattern? Do I already know that someone's going to put this dagger in me before it even comes? Again, I feel like this person has become submissive to this energy. But the magician above it, I feel like I can change that. I just have to have that realization. And sometimes, you know, especially with Mother Mary saying be strong, it means that it may be a little difficult to make a change. But, man, does it feel like change is needed? We have the Queen of Pentacles. So, probably you. Though, I have to tell you, when I do a reading, I feel like usually you're all people. Um, because I feel like we are all the queens, all the kings. Many of us have had the experience, you know, we've walked down the path of the cups and the pentacles and the wands and the swords. And now it's about what we're going to do next. You know, it's it's taking that wisdom and then making change, deciding what I want to do next. You know, I love the Queen of Pentacles kind of showing up here because I call her my psychic detective. This is someone who can usually feel, know that something's going to happen before it happens. Can she deny it? Of course she can. Of course she can. Some of you may have had change in your work life. And it may have, again, felt like a tower, like, holy shit. Right. But it may just be putting you on a path that, you know, I mean, she's holding this big pentacle in her lap. So maybe putting you on a path that's going to feel right, but it may take time. You know, this is someone who really has learned to read energy like, you know, she reads between the lines. I often feel like if I'm going to take a contract to someone, I'm going to take it to the Queen of Pentacles. 
because she's going to read that contract. She's going to find those hidden clauses that other people just skim right over. It's hard to pull the wool over her eyes. She is under the tower and also next to the Ten of Swords. But I have to say she's also looking towards the future. Wow, what a what a mix of cards we're getting here. Five of Wands. Well, that's drama. That's ego. It's fighting. It makes sense with all the swords that are on the table, and these are the difficult swords. You know, I have to be honest. I feel like if I expect someone to back down here, chances are they're not. I feel like, you know, a lot of times you'll see the Queen of Wands where she's rising above drama. And I feel like that's really our only answer here is just to rise above it, not allow ourselves to get pulled down into it. I have to feel this energy if I'm waiting for someone to say, hey, I know I put those swords in your heart. Hey, I know that I keep doing it over and over again. I probably won't get it. But truth be told, I probably don't need it. It is a five, so it does speak about change. So, you know, just be careful. Just think about, you know, what energy is around you, because really that's what the new moon, the new moon is about. Like, what is the energy around you? Are you surrounding yourself with people who are full of drama? Is it serving you? Probably not. Just don't allow yourself to get pulled into it. What a mix of cards. You know, I like the magician being the very first card because that really speaks about your power. We have the moon. Also interesting because I opened the reading saying that um, this new moon, the two signs that it's going to affect the most are Virgo and Pisces. And this is the um, major arcana for Pisces. Also the ruler of cancer, by the way. But also we're doing a new moon reading. So that makes sense. I also feel like, though, this moon is saying that maybe one of the reasons I haven't made certain choices or certain changes is because, you know, the uncertainty of what's next is a little scary. And I get that. It is a little scary. You know, I feel like everything I've done in my life, um, I just took a step forward. I uh, didn't know, you know, you don't know how it's going to turn out. But if you put your effort behind it, Unless it's this type, you know, the three of swords, the ten of swords, the five of wands, the tower. Listen, that definitely feels like narcissistic type of energy. Those type of people are not going to change. They're not going to back down. But in the same breath, are they enhancing my life? Are they depleting my life? You know, the moon can also talk about dreamy type energy, like dare to dream, dare to dream big. And then be willing to put the energy behind it, even if it's just a step forward. We have the Empress. Beautiful. Now, I love the Empress marrying the Magician. And, you know, coming between the Magician and the Empress is the Ten of Swords. There's no way the Empress would accept the Ten of Swords. She probably has. She's probably learned from it. This is someone who, um, you know, we're all receiving signs continuously. But this is someone who 
really is really notices the signs and then puts them to use. This talks about your creativity, you know, and what you do in the world. This is someone who, you know, doesn't allow her past to close her heart. She stays loving and nurturing, but she's very powerful. She's very strong. And I do feel like she has walked the path of all the queens. This is the mother figure. You know, some of you, um, you know, I feel like some of you are empaths and you feel, you know, you feel the energy of the world and you have to learn really how to protect yourself. I know I do. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially if I watch the news, it can be overwhelming. Um, and I, I very seldom watch the news now. You know, it's learning like what energy affects me in a negative way and just not doing it, not being around it. Um, the Empress is someone who, you know, she receives these epiphanies. She gives them time, and that time can mean putting a plan to place, but then she gives birth to them. So I feel like Divine and her work great together. I feel like you are the Empress. Or you have the ability to be the Empress. But again, the Ten of Swords and the Empress, they just don't fit together. They're completely different vibrations. Completely different vibrations. You know, following the moon, I would say this is also asking you to take a chance on yourself, on your ideas, on your creative ventures. You know, don't give up on love. But also understand, who am I loving? Are they loving me back? The Empress, gentle, but powerful. And no one can take that away from her. I feel like once you reach this status, this vibration, that's that. And those in a lower vibration naturally fade away. Or she demands that they fade away. It's like goodbye, ten of swords. Goodbye, drama. I don't have time for you anymore. I'm not going to allow this lower vibrational energy to keep breaking my heart. I have plans. I have things that I want to do. Hello, fool. So we already talked about the fool relating to the magician, right? The fool means a new beginning. But the fool really is talking about the wisdom that you have gained from the past, from your past experiences, and just bringing that wisdom along, but not the hurt and the pain and allowing yourself to have this new beginning. I love that the fool's coming right next to the empress. Some of you are, you know, it's like your, your creative self is opening up. And I feel like you're putting it to use. This is about taking a leap of faith. Even after this hardship, right? That was a chapter. You know, I feel like one of the lessons I've learned through reading Tarot is we really have to learn when certain chapters are meant to end. You know, we run in chapters like, you know, nine year chapters. The death card reminds me that, you know, certain doors need to be closed. And, and when those doors close, a new door will always open. And that is the truth. A new door will always open. And then the full the willingness to take a faith, take a leap of faith into this next door, onto this next journey, and coming right next to the Empress. Wow, that's powerful. And the fool's looking right at the Empress. The fool's mirroring that tower. So it's like the power of that tower is no more. 
doesn't mean you're completely healed. But one of the things I feel like we have to learn to do, even when maybe our heart is still a little broken, is still think about our path. What is it I'm here to do? What is it that I want to do within my life? You know, the three of swords, the ten of swords, the tower, and the five of wands makes me feel like I may have put in, I may have put my myself like on the back burner. But now the Empress is bringing you to the front burner. Taking a leap of faith. Well, hello, Ace of Cups. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Now, when I say that, I'm saying that whoever kept putting these daggers in your heart and in your back, that's not unconditional love. That's them thinking about them. And they're not worried. You know, I'm not going to say they're horrible people, but I don't know. So the Ace of Cups right next to the Fool, first of all, it can it can certainly represent you moving into this space of doing something that you're just going to love, something that's going to feel so right and so natural. But I first have to take that chance. And don't forget the Empress, she is loving and nurturing. She's learned that, right? I can't judge my present and future by the people I've been with. Instead, what I want to do is just look at where my own vibration was at. Have I lowered my vibration to be with another? And they just keep disappointing me. How long am I going to let that continue? So I feel this is twofold. I do feel like it's potential new love. But I also feel like it's potential of a love for something that you may be creating. We have the Hierophant, part of Taurus. Hierophant is about your belief system, your faith, your hope. You know, I love this image because you see these two keys down here and I often feel like that's the key, the keys to your kingdom. But there's two keys. So, could be someone else. And what flipped around in the deck is the star. Card of Aquarius. But this is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And this is about manifesting them. You know, with the moon here, I could have been just dreaming about like, oh, how I see my life. But now, with the new moon, it's like now putting them into action, even if I'm just taking one step forward. I feel like the rest will kind of reveal itself. It reminds me when I re started reading Tarot, which, you know, sp I was spiritually inclined. Um, I knew nothing about Tarot, but I just got a deck, started playing with them. Then I started doing free readings on Facebook, um, and people were just flocking to me, so to speak. And then Facebook kicked me off because you weren't allowed to do these readings. And I thought, well, that's that. But then I moved to YouTube and now I have a much wider audience. So do I feel like I was meant to get kick off, kicked off of Facebook? At the time, I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? But then the universe answered that question for me. So. You know, it's like when you receive these epiphanies, all you need to do is take one little step forward. And I just feel like this is really saying that, you know, you can really create a life of your dreams. But you have to be proactive. The 
the Hierophant, number five, you know, we got to relate it back to the five of wands. And that's where all that drama lies. That's where all that ego lies. So am I going to change that? And then the Hierophant, also a five. So here I feel like I'm just questioning. Am I living life according to my terms? Have I lowered my standards to be with another? And why? Like, don't be afraid to ask yourself those questions. Why? Well, maybe I'm afraid I'll miss them. Well, I feel like that would only be temporary. And one of the ways you can prove that to yourself is just look back at your own life and think about, you know, other relationships that you thought, you know, you were head over heels in love. And you may have been. Um, but then it ended and you thought, uh, well, that's the end of my life. And then lo and behold, someone new comes along. I often feel that the star is a reminder that first of all, it's our power to manifest the type of life that we truly want. But I do feel like in the star's energy, it is working hand in hand with divine. So it's not about like miracles just showing up. Now, things can feel like a miracle, but it is your effort, right? Like dare to dream big, especially coming connected to the Hierophant. Dare to dream big and mirroring the Empress. This feels like a journey that some of you have been through. And it probably was not easy. But I feel like I feel like you're turning, you're turning a page. Well, that reminds me of Bob Seger. Turn a page. Um, and I feel like when you turn that page, you just might be surprised. First of all, I feel like this is about you realizing your own power and realizing, you know, the energy I have been given away. And who have I been lowering my vibration for? And listen, I just feel like, you know, if I expect change with the Ten of Swords, I don't feel like it's going to happen. Almost like who's ever in that energy, whoever is delivering those daggers, you know, which to me is a lower vibrational energy. I feel they're more than happy to live in that lower vibrational energy. But I don't feel you are. I don't feel you are. Maybe for a period of time. But this feels like change. All right. Mm, five of cups on the bottom of the deck. You know, I feel like for some of you, this can talk about someone that I really had hoped would change. Someone that I really would hope could have loved me completely and fully. But for whatever reason, it doesn't feel like it worked out because it is a five. Now, the danger of the five of cups is we can get lost in that energy. It can turn into woe is me, which listen, we've all been there. But the reality of the five of cups is when this person makes that decision that I'm no longer going to focus on what I have lost, why these cups have been knocked over. Maybe I want to reflect on them, but I don't want to get lost in them. What do they find? What is right behind them? Two new cups. And to me, that represents soulmate type energy. And, you know, it almost feels like if it almost feels like I had to go through hell so that when my heaven on earth starts to show itself, I can truly appreciate it. Nine of Wands right underneath that. That Nine of Wands, you know, nines to me are about reflection, but it is about final reflection. Again, it's not an energy I want to reflect on for long. I just want to look back. I want to, I want to look back, but really I'm looking back to see how I have grown. 
you know, if other people haven't grown with you, so be it. I just got to realize that. I got to be strong. I call this person my spirit warrior. Because first of all, they're bold enough to look back and be very, very honest with themselves. But also, they're understanding how they have grown. You know, it's like your vibration's being lifted. But someone else's vibration doesn't feel like it's also lifting. So maybe I got to stop focusing on that. And start thinking of the potential of what could be ahead. You know, if this is relating to love, the question I would pose to you is, have you ever planned love before? Or has it, or does it usually show up in unexpected ways? You know what I mean? Because I feel like I can get lost thinking that, well, then no one's going to love me, right? If I've taken these swords, my heart has been broken. And it almost feels like someone, you know, is like in and out of your life. And um, and maybe that's what you fight about. Like, you know, one moment we're in contact and then you ghost me. And then you contact me again and it turns into a fight. Wow, I don't know. You know, there's all different levels to love. This is a lower vibrational love. Because I'm not going to say that they didn't love you. Let's just say that they didn't know how to love. For whatever the reason. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they grew up in a loveless home or something like that. Well, that's their lesson. That's their lesson to learn. You... I feel like it's about moving on. This makes a lot of sense with the new moon. It really does. Okay, let's bring in the uh, Tredivia Tarot. And um, let's just go over the reading. Let's go deeper. You know, I'm just looking at the corners of the reading and we have the magician, right? And, you know, I feel like the magician is really representing um, your spiritual self, your spiritual being. You know, like there's nothing in this in this lifetime that you probably haven't already been through that you cannot overcome. And it's that realization and the three of swords. You know, that heartache, but also the three or the three down here, which is the Empress. And I do feel like the Empress has gone through a lot of different energies, but her vibration is, you know, she knows, she knows what she wants. And it doesn't even mean that like, you know, like, it, let's say it's talking about love. Um that I'm saying that the next person I love, I want them to be Italian and I want them, I want them to be, you know, be rich. And now I'm kind of letting the universe, I'm, I'm just saying to the universe, you know, I understand now that my vibration is higher. All I'm asking for is that what comes back to me as it relates to love also be in that higher vibration. Again, that is the law of attraction. All right. We have the eight of wands. Well, what I think about, I bring about. I feel like this is the perfect example of what I've been saying. What I think about, I bring about. It is the number eight. A new beginning. And it's coming over the magician who does have that infinity sign. This is also fast moving energy. So I feel like when I make the decision to no longer, let's just say, accept this lower vibrational energy or people, things change very quickly. And I feel like you really are thinking about what you're thinking about.
we have the Page of Wands. You know, I love the Page of Wands. And here's why. I feel like the Page of Wands is a risk taker. And the Page of Wands is learning that not all the risks that I've taken have paid off. But I'm not going to stop taking these risks. And it's mirroring the fool that is asking you to take a leap of faith on yourself. So, this is someone who has fallen, but they get back up again. It's coming over the tower. So, I feel like it's definitely rebounding from that tower. And it's also interesting, right next to it is the Queen of Wands. So, it could certainly talk about even the vibration lifting. You know, some of you could have been connected to some energy that was of an earlier time. You know, like you could have been in a relationship where, you know, I just didn't know a lot. Like, I know that energy. I matter of fact, I just put a post out where I said, I want to be 14 again and destroy my life in different ways because I have new ideas now. <laughs> and I meant that as a joke. Um, but at the same time, it's like when you know better, you do better. Page of Wands is looking right over at that Eight of Wands. Okay, well. That's a lot. But we're going to take them. Hmm. King of Cups. King of Cups is marrying that Ace of Cups. Well, this is the king I'd want to see as it relates to the Ace of Cups. And I'm not talking about their sign. Now, as a sign, it can be Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We do have Cancer and Pisces on the table. But take that away now. I want you to think about this person. And this is someone who, um, in the upright, is very loving. This is someone who I feel enjoys being in a relationship, enjoys having that special person by them by their side. If it was reverse, I'd say run. But it's not. We have the five of wands over that three of swords. Five of Wands right here, connected to the Three of Swords. And now the Five of Wands is right over it. And I literally feel like this is arguments. Why do you keep breaking my heart? And excuse me for what I'm about to say, but what's coming to my mind is because you keep letting me. You keep letting me. And I feel bad for saying that. Listen, I, I've even, I've been there. Do you know? I've been there. I've been in these repeat patterns with someone where you'd hope they'd love you better or you'd hope they'd love you differently, um, but they don't. And they could even put the blame back on you. You know, do you accept that? You know, you take this five, add it to the three, it's an eight, a new beginning. So now I'm with this person. We have the Page of Cups over that Ten of Swords. Page of Cups, I feel like, is you really learning to love yourself again? You know, I feel like that Nine of Wands under that Five of Cups is so important. Because I really do need to reflect upon, you know, these swords, these daggers that just keep, you know, I want to say keep, you know, stabbing me in the back. But this person's looking right at these swords. So, and maybe it is like I had to realize my own self-worth. I also feel though a page can talk about what's in the atmosphere. And we do have the Ace of Cups. But more than anything, I feel like this is talking about, you know, 
learning to love yourself again, learning that you are enough. I don't care what anybody else tells you, right? You deserve the highest form of love. But you also need to think about where is my own vibration? Someone could certainly like broke you down, made you feel that you weren't worthy. But that's a lie. It's a lie. I'm also noticing the page of cups with the king of cups. Some of you, this could talk about like someone of a younger energy. I do not feel as this king is the same person in the ten of swords and the three swords. I just don't feel that. All right. Well, now we have the king of wands. Interesting. So two kings, two queens. King of Wands over the Queen of Pentacles. So the King of Wands to me is someone who puts actions behind their words. And I kind of love this coming over the Queen of Pentacles because I feel like this is really representing how you yourself are really learning how to read energy. You know, and to me that means you're trusting your intuition. So if let's say you know, you do cut ties, you break this pattern and, you know, maybe you don't even have love on your mind. Um, but yet at the same time, I feel like we can't really plan love. It just happens when it happens. Um, but this is someone who I feel is very different from what you've been with. Again, someone who puts actions behind their words. Matching this Queen of Wands. Interesting, we have the Queen of Wands with the King of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles with the King of Wands. Well, hello, Ten of Cups. Coming over that Five of Wands. This is the House of Love. This is the House of Harmony, Laughter, Joy. It is a different house than the Ten of Swords. It's night and day. have to believe it you know i don't feel like it's it's a guarantee because we have to remember that it is the seeds that we're planting it is our own energy that's going to determine it's free will and everyone has free will maybe i had hoped that someone else was going to be in this ten of cups with me but instead i got the ten of swords to me, this is just signifying that you can have this energy, but it may take some work. Well, hello, destiny. The wheel of fortune. You know, to me, it's movement time. This does talk about destined, um, a destined time. And listen, again, how I said earlier, sometimes we need to go through hell to really appreciate our heaven. Sometimes it's in that hell where we learn our biggest lessons, where we find, you know, how strong we are. We take away the power from these drama-filled people. And we get on to living our life the way that we see fit. Destiny. Time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. Strength card. Card Leo. You know, strength card is the willingness to go deep within oneself. And I really feel like it's a sense of courage that you come out with. You know, yes, someone's broken your heart. And again, excuse me for saying this, but a lot of times we put up with it. We allow these repeat patterns. Why? Because maybe we are afraid we're going to miss them when they go. Or we go, I should say. But then again, that five of cups is, is really representing the change in what lies ahead. And that is two cups. Well, we have the Ten of Cups. We have the wheel. 
Strength card, right over the Empress. Two eights also mirroring each other. It's like I'm putting out different intentions now. And I'll be damned. Different things, higher vibrations are coming to me. Courageous. Well, hello, Ace of Cups over the Fool. So the Fool is beside the Ace of Cups and now has the Ace of Cups right over it. The Ace of Cups is mirroring the Page of Wands, my risk taker. My Fool, the one who takes the leap of faith. You know, there's no guarantees. But if I understand what I think about, I bring about it. If I understand that I have been in repeat patterns, if I understand that I really can create a better life for myself, well, the wheel is like, that's just what we've been waiting for. Ten of Cups with the Ace of Cups under it. The Ace of Cups right next to the Ace of Cups with the Fool under it. The Fool mirroring that page of wands, taking a chance. You know, I don't feel like this is just love reading. I feel like it's a life reading. Well, I've been saying that a lot lately. You know, no wonder I'm doing the new moon. Because this really is a period of time where you're asking yourself these questions. Like, am I satisfied with the way my life looks? What changes do I want to make? How do I want my life to look in the future? And what do I need to do? There's that death card. Closing of the door. You know, the death card says, don't fear me. Because this is really about a rebirth. This is really when you really start living. Card of Scorpio. It is mirroring that King of Cups, so for some of you, it could certainly be a Scorpio. But, you know, you know how I read. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to limit the energy. Because I don't feel like I'm meant to. So, one door closes, a new door opens. And I feel like that is a guarantee. Doesn't mean it opens in like, oh, everything is lying right there in front of me. Maybe. I'm not going to leave that off the table. Because it is coming over the Ace of Cups. It does have the Ten of Cups above it. It's got the Ace of Cups beside it. It's got the Hierophant and the Star on the other side of it. And then Justice. Interesting. So, justice is a card of Leo, or a Libra. Justice is, you know, first of all, justice means what's fair and just within your own life. Justice comes out to say, I'm here to make your life whole again. However, justice is also about cutting ties to the things and the people that just are no longer serving us. And I mean that in a vibrational way. I've changed. They haven't. I have goals. They don't. I've had dreams. They broke them down. I'm reclaiming my life. And they're not part of it. Goodbye. I feel like for some of you, you may have been with someone who, you know, like, I just don't feel like faith has been a part of their life. I feel like it was me, 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 me. What can you do for me? And it wasn't about you. And again, I'm not going to say that there was no love, but I do want you to keep in mind that there's different levels to love. And those levels match where our vibration is at. You know, I feel like all of us have gotten stuck in 
people's webs that just, you know, I know I was stuck in the King of Cups webs in reverse um, for eight years. And, you know, who saved me? I had to save myself. Nobody else wanted to save me. And that's just one of the hard experiences I've had where I literally had to save myself. And, you know, the Empress isn't afraid of that. The Empress doesn't look back and say, woe is me. You know, there, and there's nothing wrong with saying woe is me. But the Empress is really about what's going on today. What can I do today? How can I create the future that I see in my head, that I feel in my heart? What intentions, what seeds am I planting? As it relates to love, she's her heart is open. She remains loving and nurturing. You know, just because someone else had made you feel less than, the Empress has found herself again. She understands her power. She is mirroring the magician. And she knows what I think about, I bring about. She gets that energy. It's interesting that justice is the last card, the cutting of ties. But these ties that are being cut, what are they doing? They are giving you balance back in your life. They're allowing that these dreams through the star energy start to manifest. You know, I never like to tell people, you know, I don't even want to tell people what to do. It's not about telling people what to do. It's just presenting you the energy that shows and then you deciding from there. You know, and justice can also represent karmic energy. Some of this could have been karmic lessons. And listen, if you learn that karmic lesson, you learned it for eternity. Not only do you learn it for yourself, but let's say you're a mother and you've been putting up with this three of swords and this ten of swords energy. And let's just say you have daughters or even sons and they see that. Then they start to think, OK, well, that's just what love looks like. That's how I learned love. You know, that's why many of you who know Sam and I's story, when we were teenagers, he said, I love you. And I couldn't say it back, even though I did, even though I loved him. And why couldn't I say it back? Because I never heard it from my mother. So, you know, but listen, and I had to reflect upon all that to understand all that. Anyway. It feels like there's a rebirth in the way that you're thinking, a rebirth in your vibration, a lifting of your vibration. And listen, if that's the case, just be open to what the universe wants to supply, you know, and with the wheel here. Some of this may be already destined, like this Ace of Cups. It's everywhere, right? The Ten of Cups. It is like the promise of, you know, it's the opposite of that Ten of Swords. But we can't say, well, that wasn't meant to be, but this Ten of Cups is. Maybe it was all meant to be. But really what I was learning is what not to accept, how to love myself better, that my vibration is nine-tenths of the law. I needed to believe in me. And I needed to take the steps to create that better life for myself and maybe even my children. If it was karmic, you pay it off for eternity. And listen, I feel some of this lower vibrational energy of another that's their karma. And you can't fix that. That's their lesson. You know, don't try to change a narcissist. You won't. Don't waste your time. It will always, it will always be me, 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 me. Now, 
Can they potentially change? Of course, I think anybody can change. But I'm not seeing it here. I'm not seeing it at all. What I'm seeing is you and the potential of you and the potential really of another. You know, I feel like this is covering all areas, like taking those creative ideas and taking a chance on yourself, right? You may just find that you, you know, it's like what I, it's like years and years and years of after me reading Tarot, now I'm just so in love with it. I'm just so in love with it. And it has taught me so much. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say the cards. It's more my spiritual team using the cards as tools, really to open up my intuition, to ignite that intuition within me. But I always want you to trust your own intuition above all. Yet, I do feel like I feel like my spirit guides connect to your spirit guides. And that's why I always say, like, a reading will find you in divine timing. You know, even if it's five years after the fact, it may be that time. It may be just that right time for you. Okay. With the seven of wands on the bottom of this deck. So, you know, on the bottom of the deck is usually energy that is ready to go. Seven of Wands is the energy of standing your ground. Yes, stand your ground. But also understand, all right, what am I standing my ground about? And is it is it having any effect? Because sometimes I feel like we can stand our ground, like, you know, the Five of Wands. I can get pulled into that drama. I can say, you need to apologize, but it never comes. So sometimes I feel like this is just about, well, it can talk about where even you, like, how do I say this? Like, I feel like the loving energy within you is, is rising. So you may take your own lessons and then turn around and help those who maybe are still in this difficult energy. You know, I feel like that is truly how divine uses us. And I feel like I have had a very, very difficult life. I have. I mean, it's not that I haven't had blessings. I have. Um, but, you know, now after doing these readings for so many years, I understand that my lessons, you know, the hardships that I've been through are to help you, to help those that understand the messages. You know, and I don't look back and say, woe is me. I understand, and I understand many times it was me who put myself in that position. So it was me who needed to save myself. Unconditional love. You know, you have two aces of cups. So I feel like I feel like it is talking about not just love. Yes, it is talking about love and real love or a high vibrational love, but also a love of what you do. It's like covering all the bases. All right. Um, I'm not going to read all those cards, but I do want to read from Mother Mary. Be strong. Because I feel like that's probably, I don't know, that's the one I'm being called to. So I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to read it. Be strong. This, mes this message counsels you to take swift and firm action towards resolving your present situation. Mother Mary avows that you are stronger than you think you are. You can also call upon the, re the wellspring of God's strength. To lift you up. Do not wallow in any feelings of victimhood or passivity. There's that five of cups. Use your God given strength right now. The strength card, writer of the Empress. This message may, may also be asking you to engage in physical activity and to develop your strong, healthy body. 
If you've been thinking about working out with weights, then this card is additional validation that it's time to exercise. How interesting, because that's how I opened the reading, talking about the new moon, where I felt like, and that's why I brought Archangel Raphael out. Because I feel like the things that we're going to be concentrating during this new moon are, you know, the one question I wrote is, where do I go from here? Am I satisfied where I'm at? Or do I want to start making these changes? But I also felt we're also going to question our health and how we can make it better. So I feel like Mother Mary covered it all within one message. And I'm going to let that be. I feel, you know, I feel like this reading was divine. Um, and I also find it interesting that I planned on doing it for Virgo just as a birthday reading. But then my intention went to that new moon, which really brings everybody in. Uh, so, uh, you know, I feel blessed for that. You know, I see the hardships. But I also see the blessings in this reading. And I hope you do too. I hope you do too. Um, and one more thing. I just put a post out there. Um, to really to help those who have like new channels. It doesn't have to be a new channel. But let's just say you know. A channel that you want us to be aware of. Um, certainly share it with us. Because I feel like this is a, a time where we really should sh we should help support each other in any way we can. So share your links. Um, you know, it may not show right away because I have to approve a link, but definitely share your channel. And um, I don't know, at least I want to help support you. I hope everybody else does too. I feel like this is a great time to really help each other. So I thank you guys. I love you guys. Truly, I love you guys. Um, I hope that, you know, I hope you listen to this reading with your spiritual ears. And I feel like then it will be very clear to you. Then it'll be clear. And for those who are stuck in the Three of Swords or the Ten of Swords, my prayer for you is that you find your way out, that the light reaches you. And that you... Be bold enough to make whatever changes need to be made, even if it's just a step forward. You know, no one's asking you to jump, you know, a whole way in step by step by step. And next thing you know, you're living a different life. I love you. Thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.